Okay, we're going to start chapter 16, which deals with uh, process costing. Uh, this is a, a, another manufacturing method different than job order costing uh, in that we don't have specific jobs uh, in which to track costs to. We have a process, and think of this as like an assembly line, is that this assembly run, line is running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and, and it's constantly kicking off finished product. There's constantly uh, uh, unfinished uh, work or products on the assembly line. And uh, so, but, but uh, 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 there's no start or finish to the process. So that's what we're going to look at. Now, in this first video, we're going to cover this first section, which is exactly what is process costing and what are equivalent units of production. And then we'll do an example. Of, uh, uh, of what that is. Uh, so I, I foresee having three videos in this chapter to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to help explain what it is. So we're just going to go forward here, get through this fluff stuff, and here's where we are, process costing. Now process costing uh, is, like I said, it's, it's think of it as an assembly line. It's like uh, producing cereal, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Those, the, the boxes of Kellogg's Corn Flake are coming off that assembly line all the time, but there's no start or stop to the to the job it's uh, they started making that decades ago and it just hasn't stopped pharmaceuticals which are you know like aspirin or ibuprofens um, uh, household products like tide or or soap it's just we're continuing to make them and that's what all of these are is they're just a process that's uh, that's uh, being uh, 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 that's being used to produce a product so let's compare that to the job order costing and see kind of we're going to review a little bit job order costing and see what the difference is. Now, as you recall, job order costing, we have our three inventory accounts. We have our raw materials, our work in process, and our finished goods. And in work in process, we have our direct materials, our direct labor, and our factory overhead. And work in process is where all the, the, the product is produced. This is where all the action takes place. Fin raw materials is just a quiet place where, where unfinished materials that haven't even been put into production yet, they're just waiting. Finished goods, finished products quietly sitting on a shelf ready to be sold, work in process. This is where the action is all, is all at. Direct materials come from raw materials and then we add direct labor and we apply factory overhead and ha and the, the 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 how do we track the costs in job order costing we track them with job order sheets we open a a sheet for every job that we begin and so how do i know um, how to how much to transfer out of work and process to finish goods how do i know how much to transfer that that's that was a question well it's just a matter of I'm gonna look at material requisition slips to find out to find out how much raw materials were used directly on jobs and I'll make a journal entry to transfer out of raw materials to direct materials and then we'll add it down here to the job cost sheets whatever job it was transferred to then we pay labor we grab our time cards, do an analysis, find out how much of the total labor cost is direct labor, that is, can be traced directly to jobs, and we add that to work and process, and of course, we add it to the job cost sheets, and then we apply factory overhead, usually at a percentage of direct labor, so we charge that, and now at the end of the month, how do I know how much to transfer to work in process, or sorry, transfer out of work in process to finish goods? Well, we look at the job cost sheets. Hey, this job is done, this job is done. Oh, well, let's take their two costs, add them together, transfer that to finish goods. That's how I know. I don't even have to wait to the end of the month to do this. Whenever a job is finished, I can transfer it at that point in time really kind of an online or a real-time accounting. And so there'll still be a balance here. And what balance is that? What, what balance is this? Well, that's the one job that's still going. So really, we're just adding materials 
labor and overhead to work and process and of course adding it to jobs and when a job is done we take that total cost and we transfer it to finished goods and that's where it'll sit until we sell it and then when we sell it it goes to cost of goods sold now in a process cost system it looks more like this is, is that the work in process is really like an assembly line. It's really a kind of a kind of an assembly line where products are being produced, and and on the first part of the the assembly line, things are you know not really quite put together, and in the middle portion, things are starting to kind of take take shape a little bit, maybe a little bit, and at the end of the assembly line, that product is done and falls off, and so it's completely done. So we're starting with raw materials, and then we're converting it, converting it by, uh, by incurring direct labor and factory overhead. We're converting it to a finished product, which then goes onto the, onto the shelf to be sold. Now, if we wanted to apply the same principles as, uh, as job order costing, we've got a work in process account, and that's what this is. That's the assembly line. And we're going to be adding direct materials, just like we did from just like we did in, in, in uh, uh, job order costing, we're going to be going and getting raw materials and putting it on the assembly line all month long. We're going to be incurring direct labor because there's direct labor guys here running the assembly line. And we're going to be charging factory overhead, usually at a percentage of, of direct labor. We're going to be doing that as well. But then how do we know, same question we just posed, how do we know how much to transfer to finished goods? Because this job never stops. It, it, it's, it's, just, it's, it's a continuous process, and, and, and throughout the month, it just continues to go. We're continually getting materials. We're incurring labor. We're applying factory overhead at a predetermined rate, percentage of direct labor. But at the end of the month, we've got a pretty big amount here. In work in process we've gone and gotten a lot of raw materials and we've we've incurred labor and we've charged factory overhead but is all this cost still in work in process and the answer is no as a matter of fact what we have is throughout the month we may have um, a large stack of finished product here There's still a couple items here, and of course this is this is this fell onto here as well. So at the end of the month, this is all that's in work and process. All of these costs were incurred to do what? To to finish all of this product, as well as to begin a, a little bit that aren't quite done yet. Again, the question is, how do I know how much of this cost to assign? to these products that are done because it's not there's no job cost sheet that that is actually keeping track of the cost of a particular job and when that job is done oh I can just total it up and transfer the cost to finished goods No, we can't do it that way so we've got to come up with a different way um, to track costs it doesn't so so we are going to track the costs of products but we got to come out with a, a different way and what we're going to do is we're simply going to track all the costs for a period of time, probably for a month, all the costs for a period of time, and then we're going to compare that to the, the what I actually completed, what I actually completed. So it might work out something like this. I actually, um, I actually incurred total costs of $100,000. I'm just going to just say for the month, we kept track of how much materials we went and got during the month and put on the assembly line. We kept track of the labor we paid everybody and we charged factory overhead. Turned out to be $100,000. Now, I want to know, well, we finished most of what we started. Finished most of it. And there's still some on the assembly line. So I want to know how much did these cost? Because these have to be transferred to finished goods. Well, I want to know, well, 
how many units are we talking about here? And if I say this is 98,000 units, boxes, bottles, whatever, and these that are still on the assembly line are 2,000 units. So let that sink in a little bit. For $100,000 this month, I actually finished 98,000 units. And there are 2,000 units still in work in process. So what's the cost of those 98,000 units that I, I um, uh, uh, produced? Well, theoretically, all I want to do is I want to say, I want to look at the total number of units. There is a total of 100,000 units. And how much money do I have? How much, uh, how much did it cost me for these 100,000 units? It cost me $100,000. So what did it cost per unit? That's a dollar per unit, isn't it? Since I finished 98,000 units, what did they cost then? Oh, $98,000. So if I transfer $98,000 to finished goods, that'll leave $2,000 here, the cost of the 2,000 units that are still in work and process unfinished. That's the theory. It's going to get a little bit more complex, not much a little bit more complex than that, but that's the theory. Since I don't have jobs to track costs, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep track of the costs for a period of time, total cost for a period of time, and compare it to what, what I actually did. What did I finish and what's still here? And so I can allocate that total cost to what was finished and what's still here. Let's do another quick example. Total costs for a period of time. Direct material, direct labor, factory overhead. Total costs this month were $500,000. $500,000. Now most of what I think what most of what I worked on is done and it was and, and it went off to the to, to be set on the shelf. How much of this cost should I assign to the units that were completed? Well, I need to look at my production, my production, and I'm going to say, oh, we got, um, oh, let me, let me work it out here. Let's say I've got 5,000 units still in work in process and 45,000 units are done. So think about that. I actually began 50,000 units. Started 50,000 units this month. 45,000 of them are done. 5,000 are still here. So what I want to know is what's the cost of the 45,000 units that I completed? So I can transfer their cost to finished goods. Well, if we simply say, well, the total cost was $500,000, and what did I complete? Well, I completed 50,000 units. That's $10 per unit. $10 per unit. So how much should I transfer for these 45,000 units that I completed? How much of this 500,000 was for those? Well, we took the 500,000 divided by the 50,000 units as $10 per unit. So these must have cost four hundred and fifty thousand dollars ten dollars per unit times the forty five thousand and if we do the math here fifty thousand we're taking four hundred and fifty thousand out transferring to finished goods that leaves fifty thousand dollars well isn't that the five thousand units still in work and process at ten dollars per unit yes it is yeah so that's what I want to do is that I am I'm going to track all the costs for a period of time. I'm also going to be track the production. How many units am I talking about, whether in finished goods or work in process? How many are they? And I'm going to determine, I'm going to allocate this total cost to the units that are done and the units that are still here based on a per unit cost. That's the theory. That's what I'm going to do. So, now because we have a... A, uh, a process here 
most processes go through several departments. So we are going to have our raw materials inventory, our work in process, and our finished goods. But, like I said, most processes go through a, uh, uh, several departments. So one, um, uh, uh, one difference between process costing and job order costing is that we're going to have multiple work in process accounts. So with this may be, I'm going to say that we're, this process, we bake cookies. We actually manufacture cookies and we bake them. So what they do is perhaps, um, uh, uh, perhaps they go through several processes. The first process is the mixing department. So these are departments, work in process. The, the physical uh, uh, the physical flow of the, the product through our, our factory is that first it starts in mixing. We go get raw materials and we add those raw materials, which are in the ingredients, in the mixing department. And then when the, they're all mixed, then we send it to the baking department, which is a second, which is just a second, it's just a segregated area of our factory. That's the work in process baking department. Then, after it's all baked and cooled, then it goes to the, uh, the frosting department. Frosting department, where it gets frosted. And then, perhaps from there, it goes to the packaging department. So the physical flow of a cookie through our factory it, it's the ingredients are sitting here in raw materials and it goes into to to the mixing department so we start with the cost of direct materials direct labor and we apply factory overhead and it ends up with a certain cost that cost is then transferred to baking where we may add more materials more direct labor more factory overhead so now it's got even more cost. At this point, it's got the cost of the, 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 the mixing and the cost of the baking. Then it transfers to frosting, where we add more direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Then it gets transferred to packaging, that cost. Boy, the cost is getting bigger and bigger, where we add more direct materials, more direct labor, and factory overhead, at which point then it's transferred to finished goods. So just as cookies go through the process, it's accumulating costs. It's accumulating materials, labor, and overhead from each department it goes through. So it starts with the cost of ingredients and the mixer's time and some factory overhead. Then it gets transferred to baking. Maybe it's put into some, some uh, disposable cups of some kind to be baked in. Labor, factory overhead. Then it gets transferred to frosting, where it gets frosting ingredients added, more labor, more overhead. Then it gets transferred to packaging, where it gets put into a nice packaging. The direct materials in this department is the packaging itself. More labor, more overhead, and finally, the total cost is transferred to finished goods. So in a process, we are actually going to be looking at just one particular department. Just one particular department. So we're not going to trace, in, in this class, it's a little beyond the scope of this class, to trace the cost through every department. We are going to focus on one department, and we're going to track the costs that are coming in, the labor, I'm sorry, the materials, the labor, and the factory overhead. And depending on how many cookies we were able to finish and send off to the baking department and how many are still here being mixed, at the end of the month, we're going to allocate the total cost of this department for the month to find out how much is going to be transferred to the next department and how much needs to still, still be here, representing the cost of the cookies that are still here. That's what we're going to be doing. Now, I know this is probably still fuzzy, but at least this is probably looking a little familiar to you. We're, transfer, we're, we're still tracking the same three product costs. It's just that I can't look at job order cost sheets to see what jobs are done to transfer that cost out of here. I have to do some computations at the end of the month and allocate the total department's cost to those units that I was able to finish and leave some cost on what are actually here. 
Let's go back to the chapter. Talks about the the you know what process costing is in a job order cost system. We take our three product costs and they're they're actually tracked on job cost sheets. And when the job is done, it's transferred to finished goods. In a process cost system, we have our same three product costs, but they actually go to to separate work in process accounts. So what we do is that that the 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 all three of these costs are incurred as a product starts in one department that gets transferred to the next department, then gets transferred to the next department, which is usually like packaging, then to finished goods. So it's picking up. This product is incurring direct material costs probably in all three departments, labor costs in all three departments, as well as overhead in all three departments. So when we finally get to a finished product, it's, it's, it's got costs from all departments. We'll come back to these entries when we, when we get into the entries. But before we can actually start to, to, to do some numbers, we have, to get, we have to understand the concept of equivalent units of production. Equivalent units of production. So let's talk about what that is. What exactly are equivalent units of production? Well, they are this. In order to, to determine, okay, so I'm going to put a work in process account here. I'm going to start with a, 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 a pretty simple example. Now, in order to compare production uh, amounts, the number of units completed, in order to compare them, we have to measure them on the same scale. We have to, to, to convert partially completed units to equivalent whole units. Now, they, they, um, I have heard it referred to as equivalent whole units of production. This text refers to it as just equivalent units of production. Let me set the stage for what that is. Suppose you have two guys here, and they're working on the assembly line. And we say, we're tracking their production, and we say, hey, uh, hey guy number one, what, did, what were you able to accomplish this month? And he said, well, I did, I finished 2,000 units, and they are completely done. They are completely done. Hey, good for you. Now, guy number two, what were you able to complete? And he said, hey, I've done, I did uh, 4,000 units. Uh, but they're only 25% done. So this is like this guy. How many pails were you able to fill? Well, I filled 2,000 pails. Well, how many pails did you fill? Well, I had 4,000 pails, but I only got them a quarter complete. So now, without considering how complete they are, could we say this guy uh, produced twice as much as the first guy? He, he's got 4,000 pails going. The first guy's got only 2,000 pails or 2,000 units. But look, he is completely done. He is completely done. Uh, the, the, but he only he might have he might have twice as many units, but he only got them a quarter of the way. So I think that you can see that that the first guy is much more efficient, even though he only had half the units. And here's why: it's because in terms of equivalent units of production, equivalent whole units, the first guy he he actually has two thousand units and they are completely done. So how many equivalent whole units are they? 2,000. They represent 2,000 whole units. But this guy, he has 4,000 units that are only 25% complete. Now think about it in terms of, of pails of, of paint or something. 4,000 pails, 25% complete. If he would have just concentrated on filling pails, how many would he have been able to fill? 4,000 pails, 25% complete, you just multiply it. 4,000 pails, 25% complete is equivalent, is equivalent to 1,000 full pails. Now we can compare. Now we can say, well, this guy is twice as efficient as this guy. He did the equivalent of 2,000 pails. He did the equivalent of 1,000 pails. Do another one. This guy, he's done 1,500 pails, got them 100% complete, and he's got another 500 pails that are 50% complete. This guy did 
2,000 pails, 75% complete, and another 1,000 pails, 50% complete. I want to know in terms of equivalent whole units. I mean, I can't really compare these because they're, they're, they're at different stages, different levels. I want to know how much did each guy, in terms of equivalent whole units, how much did they complete? Well, you just do the math. You just multiply it. 1,500, 100% complete. 1,500 times 100% is 1,500. And 500 times 50%, 500 half complete is equivalent to 250 complete. He has the equivalent of 1,750 units. How about this guy? Well, 2,000 units, 75% complete. So 2,000 times 0.75 is 1,500. And 1,000, 50% complete is equivalent to 500, so he did the equivalent of 2,000 units. So he had a little bit higher production than him because we're, we're now we're, we're converting these partially completed units to equivalent whole units. The school does the very same thing at, at, at City College. All skills do this. So they, they call it uh, FTEs, FTEs, which are full time equivalent, equivalents, full-time equivalents. So in measuring students, the school recognizes that, that we may have, you know, we may have 35,000 students, but some of them are part-time, some of them are only taking one class, some of them are full-time. We want to know how many, in, in determining what we are actually servicing, how many um, students are we servicing, we convert students into full-time equivalents. If we took everybody's units, all the units taken by these 35,000 students, and divided it by 12, which is full-time, 12 units, this may convert to maybe you know 28,000 full-time equivalents. That's how many, the equivalent full-time students we are servicing. Some are part-time, some are full-time, but at least now we have one number which represents our, you know, the, 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 what we are, 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 are providing education to. And we can compare that to Clovis Community College and, and Bakersfield Community College and, and Madera. Uh, so we actually, these are equivalents. So that's what we're looking at is equivalent units of production. Equivalent units of production. How do I apply that to this scenario? Work in process. Well, I might look at something like this. I might say that here's the work in process is like an assembly line. Just think of it like an assembly line. And that came off the assembly line, we finished a lot of units here. And on the assembly line, we've got some units here that are pretty close to being done. I'm going to say these are 90% complete. We've got some units here that are kind of 50% complete. And then we've got some here that are just barely getting started. They're 10% complete. So what I, in fact, was able to accomplish for a certain amount of money uh, I'm just going to say that, oh, uh, you know, for, for you know, $450,000 this month, direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Kept track of the costs I incurred for all of these. Came to $450,000. So that's the cost. How much was I able to accomplish for that $450,000? Well, this may represent, I'm going to say this represents... 10,000 units. This represents 20,000 units that are half complete. There are 8,000 units that are 90% complete. And I actually finished 95,000 units. So here's the concept you need to grasp. What was I able to accomplish for $450,000? Well, I was able to, to get 10,000 units, 10% 10 finished. I was able to get 20,000 units, 50% completed. 
I was able to get 8,000 units, 90% completed, and I was able to finish 95,000 units. Now, do I just add all of these up and say that I had 95, 105, 125, 133,000 units? That's what I was able to, to complete for $450,000? The answer is no, because these are not the same as these. These are only 10% done. These are completely done. So I need to know what the equivalent units of production are. So let me calculate out what the equivalent units of production are. Let's start with the easy one. 95,000 units is 95,000 equivalent units. Not only are they equivalent units, they are whole units. They do represent whole units. But let's go to the assembly line right now. On the assembly line, at the end of the month, there's 10,000 units, 10% complete. How many equivalent whole units does that represent? Just multiply it. 10,000, 10% of the way is the same as 1,000, 100% of the way. Just multiply it. 20,000 units, 50% of the way, represents 10,000 equivalent units, whole units. And 8,000 units, 90% of the way, represent 7,200 equivalent whole units. Now let's add them up. We have the equivalent of, there may be 133,000 physical units, but equivalent whole units is 113,200 equivalent whole units. Finished units are, are whole units. They are 100% complete, but we have to convert what's in work and process to whole units. That way, now I can add these up because now we've converted these partial units into the equivalent of whole units. That's what we're going to be doing. And now we can work with this number to allocate this cost. That number to allocate that cost. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, the, the, the next section of this, uh, um, well, yeah, the next section of the, 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 the text actually deals with doing a problem. That's going to take a little bit of time. So at this point, I just want you to, to get through the first few pages talking about what uh, process costing is, equivalent units of production. Uh, and I think later today, uh, probably, yeah, later today I'm going to load, uh, or it might ever, by the time you see this, it might already be loaded. Uh, I'm going to load the, uh, the, the next video, which actually shows the computations uh, and a way of organizing the information so we can actually look at it. So with that, let's just get started on chapter 15. Uh, don't wait till the last minute, or sorry, 16, chapter 16. Don't wait till the last minute to start this, and we'll continue on.